last night, June the 12th, saw Shakur Stevenson get a unanimous decision against Jeremiah Nakathila. All three judges scored the fight 120 to 107. Shakur scoring a round um, and knocked down in round four. But in all honesty, this was an absolutely woeful fight. Um, in the UK, had the joys of waking up uh, for 3.30 in the morning to, to start watching this. Um, actually didn't see all the fight. Tim Bradley said this fight was going to make him fall asleep. Well, I've gone one better. I fell asleep in round 12 of the fight. Um, yeah, it wasn't the best of fights, unfortunately. Um, I massively rave about Shakur Stevenson. He's one of my favourite young fighters coming up. Last night, he didn't look good. He has come out and said that he wasn't feeling the best. Um, a bit biased, but I'm going to give him a pass on that. Um, the fight itself, he did start slow. It seemed like he was quite tentative. He was worried about the power that was going to be coming back from Jeremiah's uh, negative here. From the third round, he started finding his range, hitting his opponent a little bit more cleanly. Nakathia, I think, landed 9% of his shots throughout the whole fight. 9%. So for every 10 punches he throws, he's landing one. And I think that was a big part of Shakur's problem. He was throwing too many single shots. He was just trying to hit him with the left hand. He was quite happy not to force the pace. Going forward, I think that really has to change. Um, there were moments where he backed Nakathia up, made him look in trouble, mainly because Nakathia's footwork just looked awful. I thought he was Bambi or nice. There wasn't enough forward momentum from Shakur Stevenson from me. Um, could he get away with blaming the referee, who had a bit of a foot fetish? Um, there's lots of standing on the feet, but when a southpaw meets an orthodox, it's going to happen. I don't fully understand where the referee was coming from on, on that. But that one is a win. He said he felt like crap. It was an awful performance, yet he won every single round. So it does sort of highlight how good Shakur Stevenson is and maybe how overmatched Nakathia was. Going forward. Going forward, we need to see Shakur in the big fights. Next fight has to be Jamal Herring and Oscar Valdez and Miguel Burchard. We need to see how good he is when there's actual a threat to him. When someone's not worried about all that he can do. They're trying to make their own momentum. And I think that is where you're potentially going to see the best of Shakur Stevenson. I think stylistically... Oscar Valdez is the best one suited for him. I think Jamel Heron is a difficult fight. I think it's a close fight. But I would be backing Shakur in that one. The height and the reach of Heron. If you can figure out the timing of Shakur. And keep hitting him with a jab as he comes in. Similar to um, Vernon Forrest had a great jab. Timing speed when he fought Shane Mosley. He beat Mosley twice. And that was mainly due to the timing of his jab. Then, obviously, Stevenson's got a lot of problems. But that is the fight I would like them to see next. Shakur Stevenson taking on Jamal Heron later on in the year. And then, hopefully, the winner facing Oscar Valdez early 2023. If Shakur goes on to beat Heron and Vasquez, sorry, Valdez, then the next one is stepping up to lightweights where he can fight Haney, Garcia, Teofimo, if he's still there. Um, Tank, potentially, if he's coming back down one weight. Um, I'm still very excited about the future of Shakur Stevenson. But after last night's performance, it really is a case of he must do better next time out. Thanks for listening to Ian Messias from Messias Unboxing.